Welcome back to the lab, folks. What we're going to do today, we're going to build this calculator. I've been looking forward to this. So I think this is a neat little thing. Now, uh, it, it, it's nice. It comes with instructions that are actually understandable. They're well written. And uh, a very nice pictorial diagram of what to do when. And a list of all the parts, which I've checked. We have all the parts. A little uh, soldering tutorial here. A full schematic and instructions on how to use it so that's really nice I mean it's kind of comforting to have a, a, a little leaflet like this or book or manual or whatever you want to call it um, it's really nice to have that it's it's so unusual with the kits that I show you guys to have something like this but uh, this I, I guess this kit stands a little bit above the rest all right so we're just going to get right to it and uh, we're going to begin at box one here and go all the way down the end. Now, uh, box 12 involves uh, cutting up some of the instructions. So I guess we can assume that we know how to uh, carefully insert the keys into the casing holes and uh, screw the back onto it. So we, can, we would cut those ones out first. And I give you a couple of chances here, right? So if you screw this one up, you got that one. But uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna get started on it and uh, we'll speed through that. Yeah, let's cue up the music and get going.
finished. That took uh, that took one hour and twenty minutes. So it was quite a little bit of a build. Um, the parts that I found difficult were getting all these keycaps onto the, the switches. You have to assemble them all. You have to get the pieces of paper in there just right, and getting these switches through this case uh, that that took a little bit of effort. And you got to get that angle on the display to the circuit board. Uh, pretty perfectly otherwise things won't fit in there so there are the things that I did find other than that it's a fairly simple build electronically it's fairly simple and yeah, let's see it is working let's just try something simple like five times six equals 30 there we go let's see here we've got instructions we've got instructions decimal arithmetic so that was that so let's say uh, can we just take a square root of that no so uh, how does that work for example square root of 4 equals 2 operation method turn the power on after press uh, press this It's not appearing. Okay. Okay, there we go. Press four. Then press equals. The result is two. So I guess there's no way of getting the number that you have down here up into there. So if I press that, no, the two gets put up there, but I'll get the square root. That's the clear button and the on button. Um, they say here that the machine will turn off after 30 seconds all by itself. I imagine these batteries aren't going to last very long. Um, however, if you look here at the schematic, uh, this device there, 7550-1, is a, a low dropout voltage regulator. So the whole system requires 5 volts. If you were to put in a lithium battery with a charge module, charge and protection module, and then put in a boost module from 3.7 volts to 3. Point whatever the nominal voltage of the battery is, whether it's LiPo or uh, lithium phosphorus iron. Um, you get the right uh, booster, you can boost up to 5 volts and feed that directly in. And there's even here, there's a little P1 connector that would make that easy to do. Uh, that's right on the circuit board. So I'm going to, at some future point, I'm going to look at doing that. Yeah, here, let's look, look, look some more of the functions. Yeah, so it turns off after 30 seconds. Uh, calculating a four ring or three or five ring resistance. So turn it on. Operation, turn on the power on. Push the button mode to switch to the color ring RC5 or RC4 mode. Color ring RC5. Okay, color ring RC5. Interface calculator with a five ring resistance. Press yellow, violet, black, brown, brown to obtain the resistance. So let's say you had uh, yellow, violet, black, brown, and then press brown again to get the resistance. So that would be, brown would be the 1%. And then yeah, so that's 4,700 ohms. Now to get the four, four rings there's operation method in the color ring RC5 interface, press and hold the up down arrow key. So let's clear that and I'll give you four. And then you can do the same sort of thing. So they get a green, red, yellow, gold. So we'll do that green, red, yellow. Where's gold, gold. So 520K, 5%. I pretty well know the resistor codes off the top of my head. So uh, that would be great though for, for somebody learning electronics to, to get used to that. Now, function three, when the supply voltage and working voltage and current of the LED are known, the resistor value required to connect them in series with an LED can be obtained. Okay, so for example, supply voltage, Blah, 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 blah. It's 
So we've got five volt supply, working voltage of uh, the LED is three volts, and the voltage difference, of course, there's the two bursts, the working voltage of the LED, blah, blah, blah. So operation, turn on the power. So yeah, let's just clear it. So how do we get out of this? Oh, I guess we'll go. It's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be 30 seconds of inactivity, but it looks like it just turns off after 30 seconds anyway, I guess. Okay, power on, press the mode switch to the R LED. Voltage difference is two volts. Current is 10 milliamps. And you get 200 ohm resistor, okay. Now, now this is this is going to be the handiest thing for me. Is the hex to decimal converter. So operation method: turn the power on, press the mode button to switch to this mode. Uh, enter the decimal number to automatically calculate the hexadecimal number. So one twenty-five seventy. Pretty cool. So if we press this, we can enter the hex number, and there's A, B, C, D, E, F here. So 5F would be 95. That's nice. I'm going to use that. Square root, we already had a look at. Okay. Well, that's it. That was a nice little build. And uh, yeah, it took a while. And like I said, there were, there were those little mechanical things that you have to look out for. Um, but yeah, it's a nice dirty little thing and I'm going to look to put a battery in it. I don't think I can, I can feed it those little button cells indefinitely. We'll see though how long that set lasts and I do have another set lying around here somewhere and uh, I could use them while I come up with an idea for putting a, a lithium battery into it, a rechargeable battery. There, went off. All right, folks. Thank you very much for coming out to join me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it does look like a good little kit. And like I say, uh, electronically, it's an easy build. It's just a little bit of soldering. Mechanically, it's uh, not the sort of thing I'm used to, but I guess uh, once I got going on putting these caps together, it got a little bit better. Now they do, when you push them onto the switch, it's very, very, very tight. It's very, it requires a lot of force and you have to have them lined up just right. So it took me a, a couple of tries to get that. Yeah, other than that, it was great. I enjoyed myself building this uh, a lot. And uh, it's going to be a handy little calculator, especially for just doing regular calculations and doing the, the hex to decimal conversions. I don't know if I'll be using it much for resistor values or for figuring out LED resistors, but you never know. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.